But in terms of muscle protein synthesis and how much you deposit in muscle, people will say, well, if you only need 50 grams to meet your requirement in terms of being in a positive nitrogen balance, because that's how that's determined is nitrogen balance. You mean the, the RDAs are based on just that? Correct. Yeah, which are, I Correct. mean, let, can we dismantle the RDA in a minute? We'll, we'll come back to that. It'll kind of get to that. Yeah, yeah. So people say, well, just throw 10 grams of amino acids on top of that. That's it, or just go 10 yeah, grams yeah, yeah. of protein on top of that. Because, I mean, you're there, right? That's, that's not how it works. You're, you're assuming that every single amino acid after that just goes straight to lean tissue. You've already mentioned the the thermogenic effect. How much of that? Correct. How much of that is actually coming from the protein itself being inefficiently metabolized versus a stored energy source? Do we know that? I would say it's more about the oxidation of the protein mm. and where it's going. But <laughs> I'll I'll get to that in a moment. Um, the the thing to keep in mind is that in order to maximize your deposition to get that five to ten grams, you need to maximize protein synthesis. But to maximize protein synthesis requires a disproportionate amount of total protein. So in order for you to maximize protein synthesis, we, we think it's around 1.6 to 2.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. Sorry, say that again, 1.6 to... 2.4 grams per kilogram. Of lean body weight or total body weight? Uh, the meta-analysis on this was total body weight. Okay. But if you want to say lean body mass, then you could pump it up to like 2 to 2.8 grams per kilogram of lean body mass. Okay. And you're pretty much at the same number unless you're like obese or super yep. lean. And people will like quibble about that. And I'm like, listen, just, just, get, in the, just get in the ballpark, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, which which kind of winds up with that old like one gram per pound of body weight number, right? So you, you need a disproportionate amount of protein to maximize the deposition. And so, yeah, it, it's just kind of an interesting fact. And the other thing people will say is we have this, um, one of the ways that protein is assessed or needs are assessed is what's called the uh, um, indicator amino acid method, or uh, they also look at direct amino acid oxidation, but usually the indicator is kind of the one that's the, the gold standard. Um, but if you look at direct amino acid oxidation, so I, I did this, I, I pulled up a bar of direct amino acid oxidation, which basically is like, if you feed a certain amount of protein, if you're feeding increasing levels of protein and you look at the oxidation levels of a specific amino acid, it'll be kind of flat and then you'll hit an inflection point and it'll kind of go up linearly. And they've said, okay, that inflection point right there where you start increasing amino acid oxidation, that's obviously wasteful, right? That, that, that's extra protein. You don't need any more than where that inflection point is. And then if you look at what actually increases muscle protein synthesis, it's right at where amino acids start getting oxidized. And do you think that that's just an association or do you think there's I think it's any an association. You, you don't think that that's causative? No, I don't think it's causative. I, th I think it's more, if you think about it from a teleological perspective of evolution, it would, to me, and this is one thing Don Lehman was great about. He would always ask me, why do you think this is happening? You know, from an evolutionary perspective. It would make sense that at the same amount of protein that you can start using it for energy, that you could also start building extra tissue. That, to me, that actually kind of makes sense. You've got such a surplus that now you can begin to build more lean tissue. And did you say that on average that was going to occur at roughly two grams per kilo? Well, that's that's going to be the like the higher end of that linear bar. I, I'd say so maybe you're even two and a see, half. You're probably going to see amino acid oxidation. I, I I don't know the exact number. I could find it if I dug through enough stuff, but you know, probably around one gram per kilogram of body weight protein intake, something around there. Oh, oh, I see. So you even start to see that at such a low level. Oh, so yeah. basically at the oh, RDA, yeah. once you pass the RDA, you'll probably just start to oxidize amino acids. Right. So you really got to think about protein as you've got to throw in a lot more to get out what you want. It's kind of like... So it's just a very inefficient system. Correct. Which works to your advantage because again, like yep. that wasteful feudal cycle is, is wasting energy. You know, you're, you're expending more energy. And is that all through gluconeogenesis lane? All of that oxidation, is it going to the liver to make glucose? It's been a while, so forgive me. I could be wrong. There is, I believe, some direct amino acid oxidation in terms of you have to deaminate it first. Mm -hmm. But after that, there's some pretty qu quick ways to oxidize some of those intermediates. Um, and some of them can enter the Krebs cycle directly. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. I we do see some paths for amino acids. Yeah, think to about enter. alpha. Yep. Think yep. about ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate. Right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So 
that's a, a direct, um, I, I believe, from glutamate. Yep. So, yeah, there are these places, and, and I, th I think it's like 60% of protein is gluconeogenic. That's right. Not all of it is, yeah. Right. And there, there is some specific ketogenic amino acids. Um, see, this is like if I was still in grad school, I would know this. This is a Dom D'Agostino question. He yeah, would know yeah, this, yeah. Right? I think one of the branch chains is actually ketogenic. Um, so, so you can, there are pathways to both. Um, but that's the beautiful thing about metabolism is like nothing is actually wasted. You know, if it's given off as heat or something like that, it's because there was a reason for it. You know, if it's, if it's metabolized in the glucose, it's because there was a reason for it. It's, it's one of the beautiful things. In fact, one of the pieces of artwork I want to get in my office is the, the chart of metabolism. You know, it's just such a cool thing to look at. And, you know, you almost as a scientist, I can look at that and go, you know, I could believe there's a God. <laughs> Be, just, just from like how beautiful that is.